Hello and welcome to a tutorial on how to do an air dash for your third person character. An air dash allows the player to cross gaps, avoid combat, and other things that are useful in action games. So let's take a look at how we set up an air dash function and get it working in our game. So when thinking about an air dash, we have to think about the steps that go into it. So first of all, the character is going to jump in the air, hit a button, and it's going to launch them forwards, and then they're going to fall back down. Whilst they're launching forwards, we want gravity to be essentially zero so they can do cool platforming tricks with it. Now, to do that, we have to go into our third person character and set up some functions for this. So the first function we're going to add to this is going to do air dash. And the air dash is going to, as I said, launch character forwards. So we're going to need a launch character. And we're also going to need to mess about the gravity. Now, with the character movement component, there's a gravity scale. So we can use that to manipulate the character, specifically their gravity. So from there, we do set gravity scale. So these are the two things we're going to need. So let's plug in our launch character, first of all. And actually, let's do the gravity scale first. That might make more sense and then do launch character afterwards. So gravity scale, I say we're going to be zero or close to zero. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at zero here. We'll launch character. We want to give it a launch velocity based upon whichever direction we're currently moving in. Now, the easiest way of doing that is getting our current movement input. So if you type in movement input, you'll see in here you get last movement input vector. So whichever way they're currently moving. Yep. So we're going to use that as our launch direction, but we're going to multiply it by the speed that we want to launch the mat. So we're going to convert the bottom pin here to a float, and this will be the speed we want. So I'm just going to promote that to a variable and do air dash speed and plug that into the launch velocity. Now, importantly, on the launch character, what we want to do is we want to override the Z override and override the X, Y as well. The reason why we want to do this is because when we launch the character, we want it to stop it getting, gaining any more height and also change its direction. So we want to stop any direction we're currently going in. This allows us to manipulate the character's direction and movement a lot sharper so we can do more interesting things with platforming and combat. So there's our two things set up. We then want to make sure our gravity scale goes back on after a certain amount of time. So we're going to do a set timer by event. And we're going to do a time of 0.25. So not long at all. It's going to be very short. And the event, we're going to drag down and do create event. And from that, we're going to create a matching function I'm going to rename it because default is quite ugly. And I'm going to do end air dash as the function name. And the end air dash is simply just going to turn the gravity back on. So the character movement at the moment, its default gravity scale is 1.75. So that's what I need to set it back to. So set gravity scale to 1.75. Okay, compile, save. So got that air dash and then end air dash. And if you want to, you could actually probably take this time here and make it a uh, float if you want. By promote to a variable and do air dash time. Okay. So the air dash speed, we're going to start off with a speed of 1000. And compile that. Okay, so now I need to set up the inputs for this. So I'm going to go to my input folder, actions, and create a new input. IA air dash. And we're going to go into our config for the mapping and add the new mapping for our air dash. Uh, click on the little plus button. And with the air dash, we're going to expand it open and set the key to be, let's do uh, F. Okay, so F will do our air dash forwards or whichever way we're moving. 
save and close up. Go to the event graph, add now our air dash input event. And when we started the air dash, we want to call the air dash function. And that's all we've got to do here. Now let's test that out and see how that looks in game. So not too bad, a little bit of a dash. I think it could be a lot stronger though. And let's so let's increase that. Air dash speed, we'll double that to 2000. And compile that. There you go. Obviously, you just fine tune it to how, whatever you're doing for your game. Uh, but there's one thing else we're going to add to this, and that is the when we're not moving, what's going to happen. So if I hit just jump and F, nothing happens. You see, the gravity sort of hangs me near. And that is because we currently are not moving. So therefore, that get last movement input vector is returning zero. And we multiply zero by anything, it becomes zero. So what we need to do is we need to check to see if we are currently moving. And if we are, great, use that. If not, we want to use whichever way we're facing. So we're going to go to the air dash and look at our get last moving input vector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and then convert that to a function by doing collapse to function. And this is going to do get air dash vector. I'm going to make that a pure function as it's just going to simply just grab a vector. It's not going to change anything, just getting values and plug that in. Let's go inside our get air dash vector. And there is our default, but we're going to change that based upon the length of this vector. So search for vector length. And we're going to say if the vector length here is greater than, and we'll say greater than 0.5, we want it to select that vector. So we're going to do select vector, use that as the condition. And on the select vector node, if it's true, it'll pick the A vector. So I want that to be the vector there. Otherwise, it'll pick B. And in this case, B, we want it to be whichever way the camera's facing. So when we dash forwards, it will just dash whichever way the camera's going. So we're going to get player camera manager. And we want to get the forward vector of the camera. Now, importantly for this, we only want to take into account the horizontal. We don't care about the, the Z axis. OK, so with the Z here, we're going to make that zero out by multiplying this forward vector. By one, 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 zero. And so it will come out as a like basically zero, zero on the Z. We'll plug that into there. Okay, excellent. So now our air dash is going to get the air dash vector and give us a valid one based upon what we're currently doing. So if I just stand still and jump in the air and dash, I'm going to dash forwards whichever way the camera's going. But if I'm running around, it'll dash whichever way I'm running to. As you can see, this works on the floor as well. So with air dash in particular, we probably just want to make sure it only works in the air. And that's simple enough to do. All we have to do is go to our air dash event. And I've said this before in previous videos, you want to make sure there's a way to condition before the effect. So the condition for us is going to be, are we in the air? And that's at least one of the conditions anyway. So we just get our character movement is falling and that will do for condition you can also add other conditions like stamina if that's a thing for your game um but yeah that's all we've got to do there so now if i'm standing on the floor nothing happens 
And if I jump in the air, do an air dash. Combine this with camera effects and, and visual effects like Niagara particles, and you can get something looking really nice out of this. And there you go. That's how you do an air dash. So there you go. That is how we do an air dash. And hopefully I've explained it well enough for you to understand what's going on there. But if you do have any questions, feel free to leave a question in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you want to support the channel further, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early for everyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.